I certainly hope you dance as well as you dress. There's only one way to find out. You and I, we're not so different. Agent Argyle. Little help? Hold on. Phenomenal, sweetie, but what happens next? It's called a cliffhanger, mother. Ellie, it's called a cop out. Whoa, hey, there's a cat in there. Oh my god, you're Ellie freaking Conway. Author of the Argyle series, Ellie Conway. I am such a fan. Oh, yeah, what is it you do? Espionage. Would you sign my book? <laughs> Here we go. I love this book. Come on. Who are these people? Real life spies. Why would they care about me? Because you're a goddamn fortune teller, Ellie. What you wrote in your new book actually happened, and you kicked a hornet's nest you didn't even know existed. I'm in some really big trouble, Mom. Oh, so now you're experimenting with drugs. I want all assets on them now. I need her to write the next chapter. God, I hate that cat. Um, hiya. Uh, hey. So uh, I'm from Forbidden Planet. As in the shop, or as, uh... Uh, as in the shop? Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm here for Forbidden Planet TV. Wow. Okay. Um, what was the first comic book you read? Well, the first comic I read probably isn't exactly up Forbidden Planet's. Uh, well, maybe it is. It was things like the Beano, mm. Wizard and Chips. Yeah. Yeah. You know, long time ago. Um, the first, what I say, comic comic, where I went, ooh. There's something very interesting. This was 2000 AD. Mm. Um, I really, the whole Judge Dredd stuff I thought was unbelievable. And then uh, even then read The Eagle, I think it was called. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, um, so that, that, that was, that was very much, if you think about it, in British comics. Then I went into loving, I started reading X-Men. Um, I never really did Spider-Man and Superman, which I don't quite understand. But I, <laughs> I've always been an X-Men fan. Yeah, yeah so. but I preferred, I don't know why I didn't, I don't know, I haven't, I've never even thought about it until you asked. Um, and then I got into Batman because of, um, uh, God, was it The Dark Knight? No, what was it called? The, the, the animal, um, I'm, I'm blanking, <laughs> you know, where it was reinvented. I'm actually blanking the name of it. Um, was it, better? was it Dark Knight, wasn't it called? Dark Knight, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of the movies and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and when I really took comic books seriously, it was when I was watching. Right, okay, and yeah, that makes sense. And I was sense. like, holy moly, this is, a, this is more than just fun. Yeah, So yeah. that was, I think, the beginning of my comic book. What do you think the secret to adapting a good comic is? Well, the secret, better, oh, God, the secret is acting, <laughs> a, I, I think you have to respect it. Mm. Like, when I did X-Men, it was, it, we went back to the original material, mm. you know, and what it was all about, mm. and the characters, and, 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 and I, th um, I, I think you have to, there's an, there's a message and an ethos to the early comics and the characters, and you have to mm. just never let go of that, mm. and if you are, then create a new comic, new character, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's one of my problems I had with some of the, D the DC adaptations was like, they weren't making the D, they weren't making the spirit of the original DC, especially with Superman, mm. you know, they, they were trying to make it darker, you know, it needed to be, so, um, so be faithful to the, the, where, the foundations of the story. I am such a fan, and this is honest to God, your best yet, I'm not just saying it, I'm not. Oh yeah, what is it you do? Espionage. Right. 
The greater the spy, the bigger the lie. Hmm. That's cheeky. Oh, not what you expected a spy to look like, huh? Well, yeah, in fairness, that is just about the only thing your books get wrong. A male model and a bespoke neuron jacket with a stupid haircut. It tends to stand out on a train, as opposed to everyone else in this car. Them? You don't notice. Have I lost you? You all right? Mm, no, I'm fine. And obviously, here for Argyle, mm -hmm. um, which was conceptualized under lockdown. And mm -hmm. I found watching it that the distortion between Ellie's fictional world and her experiences in the um, real world, in the real world yeah. sorry, um, uh, really mirrored how powerful storytelling became under lockdown. Yes. Um, and I was wondering if and how the pandemic shaped the creation of this film and how it perhaps shaped and influenced filmmaking overall and how it has since. Um, for me, it shaped it because, you know, we're all, we were all locked down, mm. right? And I wanted to make a film about escapism and feeling good mm. and warmth and a hug and, I could say, a ray of a warm sunlight beam coming down in a dark world. That was the reason why mm. we did it. Um, how it affects movies in the future, time will tell. Like these, you know, this is one of the first yeah. that was really shot as soon as lockdown was over. I do think what was interesting is the rejection of movies shot before lockdown yeah. is I think people have evolved during lockdown to just, I don't just think, I think they don't want the formulaic, mm. we've seen it, done it, heard it, approaching it. And you've already made some great spy movies, Kingsman included, but um, Ellie, the main character of yeah. Argo, is very a very different character from the likes of Eggsy and Harry. Um, and I was wondering what drew you to making this film from Ellie's perspective? My daughters. Right. So my, my, my girls were saying to me they, they wanted a, a female heron that spoke to them. And was, you know, and I, and I decided to make, well, I realized what it was, but I studied a lot of the, what I call the female action hero movies. Mm. And they're sort of a male character with a female name. And I thought, well, we've got to come up with a character that a man couldn't play mm. um, and, and, and celebrate feminism. Mm. Um, and when you have daughters, as a man, when you have daughters, you suddenly realize how biased the world is or was it's mm -hmm. getting a lot better and, and i just wanted to, to make a movie that celebrated being a woman what what films do you think did you reference or research watch to research this film oh, i think a good example is salt yes yeah. and salt i know was written for a man edward salt i think it was mm -hmm. and they turned over to edwina and that was about it mm -hmm. you know and then i saw wonder woman i think wonder woman was a very good example of only a woman could play that role and, mm -hmm. and that celebrated so much i really really enjoyed wonder woman um more than i ever expected to um but you know gi jane you, you can name that you, you just know in the end of the day it's just it's changed the name mm. who told you that we were coming who mm. you don't answer you're gonna be the same temperature as my coffee right now which thanks to you is ice cold so You and I, we're not so different. You're a terrorist. Then what, Agent Argyle? Does that make you? So Argyle is uh, allegedly uh, based on an unpublished novel by a mystery author. A published novel just came out. Oh novel. yes, we're number yeah. fourteen in the charts right oh, now. Oh gosh, First oh, well week, done. We're straining at number fourteen. Miracle. Fantastic. Yes. So, um, so my question is, uh, you've seen. Ha there's been a lot of um, speculation as to who this author is. What mm -hmm. are the weirdest guesses? Well, Taylor seen? Swift is definitely <laughs> winning that one, um, but it's not true. And um, the author, we're, we're going to be dragging her out into the spotlight very soon. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. Sooner than later. There's also speculation that there's going to be a shared universe between um, 
the Kingsman films and Argyle. Um, and Sam Jack, Jack, sorry, Samuel L. Jackson has yeah. characters in both these franchises. Yeah. Um, how do you think his characters would get along? Well, you just said the word speculation. Mm. Um, I think Sam Jackson can get on with anyone. <laughs> so it's very true. Um, if anyone can play in any universe and any type of genre or style, it's him. So um, I, yes, uh, long may I keep working with him. Brilliant. It's time for you to meet the real Agent Argyle. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.